Thank you for tuning into Hilantra Podcast. Get ready for a dose of holistic wellness talks to help you achieve optimal health. Enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to this episode of Hilantra, where we explore together the world of holistic wellness. Today, we have a remarkable guest with us, someone who's transitioned from a successful career in IT and telecommunications consultancy to becoming a national board certified health and wellness coach with expertise in functional medicine, integrative nutrition, and mental fitness coaching, she is now guiding individuals on a holistic journey to optimal health through her practice, Gratifying Wellness, which is based in Dubai, and her purpose is clear to educate people on how everyday choices, especially in food and lifestyle, can significantly impact their well-being. This is not just about wellness, it's about empowerment. Studies show that 80 to 90% of chronic diseases stem not as a genetic disease, but from our choices and our environment. And our guest is here today to illuminate us on the powerful connection between our daily decisions and our health. So without further ado, let's dig into functional medicine strategies for autoimmune health with our beautiful guest, Garine Serpikian. Thank you so much, Garine, for joining us today. Thank you, Rasha, for having me and for the opportunity to share and hopefully, yes, uh, help some people make some changes uh, for their wellness. Absolutely. That's a beautiful intention. So let's start, uh, Garine, by you sharing with us your journey and what inspired you to start this uh, journey into becoming a functional medicine practitioner. Well... For me, my family uh, always been the inspiration and the push for uh, solutions and making changes. So my journey started 10 years ago uh, when one of my twin daughters had a hormonal health issue. We were very blessed at that time that the pediatrician mentioned some food changes. Um, of course, uh, it was like a light bulb moment. Oh, goodness. Like, Could food have that much impact on our health? I went into research mode and implemented many more changes than just what the doctor uh, suggested. And from her side, it was just a suggestion, give it a try. Like, you know, I don't know if it will work, just give it a try. And within three months of changing my daughter's diet, her symptoms completely resolved. She was absolutely normal and she's a normal teenager now and everything uh, been fine since then. What kind of symptoms were triggered to get you to go do this? Okay, well, I will share with you. Um, she had what I thought is it swelling. I don't know if it's a bruise or something. So I went to the doctor. She was suspicious. She asked for ultrasound. She asked for um, bone x-ray. She asked for some uh, hormonal uh, test. And it was basically breast tissues growing at the age of two and a half. Wow. Yes. Very scary um, moment, you know, as a parent. I'm like, what? Like, she's a toddler. How could she have a hormonal issue? Her hormones were in the normal range, normal range, but on the upper end, and she was developing tissues. So the changes we made um, was stopping all dairy for the three, four months, switching to organic uh, eggs and chicken, and mostly organic wherever possible. And just whole foods, no more cereal, no more crackers, no more. What I thought I'm buying the best brands, you know, what I I thought at that time were healthy and good options for the kids. So move to everything homemade and that made big difference. So it's not just the food choices, but the quality of the food you bring in and you prepare for your family uh, has big impact on, on the health. I can totally relate uh, to you. Um, I've been practicing this for a long time myself, and it was for much less severe conditions, to be honest. Um, and, and, And once I started changing my food intake and my diet, also the changes in my life started happening in my health, in my energy levels, the way I sleep. So I can totally relate to you. And it's 
more impactful when it has to do with a chronic condition or something like what you were going through, which puts a toll on your daughter physically and on everybody involved mentally and emotionally as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. And from that point, I was really interested in taking different courses and buying books. And I wanted to understand how can we support the bodies that we have, you know? So I got into toxic free living and more into the nutrition. But then still that was not enough to resolve other issues like I personally experienced and my youngest daughter. Um, and it was almost simultaneous. So which led me to the functional medicine. So I started to res resolve my issues. Just changing my food and dealing with stress was not enough. I needed more. So I went into the functional medicine. I've just completed three years of studying and completed my AFMC certification. Uh, but that already during that time I was studying, I was implementing what I've been learning, digging deep into understanding why I was experiencing that. For example, I had sunlight allergy. Imagine living in Dubai and I had to cover up completely my everything, wearing gloves when outside, hiding from the sun all the time. It was very depressive, you know, I felt isolated. I couldn't go out to have fun. Two minutes walk from the car to the school for the pickup was enough to trigger very painful rash, which would last a day or two. Of course, I went to the dermatologists and doctors and I wasn't happy with what they prescribed, which is daily antihistamines and steroid creams and, you know, and use a sunblock all the time and avoid the sun. Like, I live in Dubai, like how would I, you know, live completely away from the sun? So I needed to dig deep and understand my issues. While also at that time, my youngest was having severe bloating which comes and goes, it was very painful, but she would cry and scream from the pain. Um, we saw there was, you know, linked with stress, whenever she st was stressed, it was worse. And her stress at that time, you know, learning three words for the spelling test in the school, and even something like that would trigger. Uh, there was some foods, but then I wasn't able to pinpoint exactly. I, I took her to several doctors, ran whatever tests available through the medical setups and hospitals and clinics, and everything came back again as normal. Okay, but that doesn't solve my problem. And with that bloating, she also had uh, vomiting episodes, and it became severe where she got dehydrated and I rushed her to the ER. Again, very scary moment, like what's happening to my daughter? Um, again, we were blessed at that time to have a, a functional pediatrician in Dubai, only for a few months, unfortunately. But as soon as I heard this doctor is here, I worked and we did again, investigative functional tests. Um, and with the, his recommendations and natural approaches, again, my daughter's issues uh, were resolved. Wow. So I started doing this for my family and then you know, more of extended family and friends. And then, you know, just now sharing it with uh, everyone ready to take control, you know, because it's a different way of supporting the body. It's not quick medicines and solutions. It takes time, but it's totally worth it. I agree with you. Uh, congratulations on your certification. Well done. And it's a beautiful journey. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, whether it's practitioners or people that I talk to who've gone through these things themselves, it's always the same story. There is a frustration that they couldn't find the answers they were looking for. And they've done numerous tests, spent time, energy, money, and you know the anxiety or the stress of going through the whole deal is it takes a toll on you as a person and as a family. And then once they start investigating and saying, there, there has to be something else. There has to be something else. You know, this is not it. I cannot just give up and say, okay, fine. I'm just going to live with this. No, this is not it. So when you start looking for answers, you find them. And like you said, it's about taking charge. Once you're ready to take charge, you will find the answers. You will find the ways. You will try 
and keep on trying until you find the way that will work for you. And there are ways that will work for you. Absolutely. And that's what I tell my clients. There must be a reason why it's happening and there must be a solution. It would take some time, but yes, uh, it's there. And that's the beauty of the functional medicine because it's a very personalized approach and it's focused is on finding and dealing with the root causes of disease. Um, I'd like to share uh, something. If you look at this beautiful tree, so usually what we see is the top part of the tree, the leaves, and we can use this, you know, to describe the diseases we experience. So someone may have IBS or bloating or other digestive issues or heart disease or thyroid problem or autoimmune disease. So we see that at the top of the tree. And the solution is not to do something to stop the experience of the symptoms. We need to dig deep into the root causes of disease. And if you look at the root causes, there are various. And usually there is more than one factor that's contributing to the experience of whatever disease. So inflammation, food sensitivities, poor digestion, immune imbalance, nutritional uh, imbalances, all of these matter. And I can give you a lot of examples of how that works. And unfortunately, the conventional medicine might not take these into account or, you know, consider them um, because maybe, you know, they are not following up with the latest research. Maybe they just, you know, convinced in one way of, of doing things. But when people are stuck with chronic conditions, the only way is to dig deep and understand what are the root causes. And can you explain to us, uh, so now we understand this is a beautiful explanation of the causes uh, of conditions and the different conditions. And the tree, I think the way the analogy between the tree and that is beautiful, because like you said, then you just see the symptoms which are on the surface, but you don't really see what's underneath. And this brings me to my next question is if you can explain to us how functional medicine works uh, technically and how it differs from mainstream approach to healthcare and especially when treating these conditions. Okay. Um, so functional medicine is a personalized approach. So there isn't a protocol that you apply for everyone experiencing whatever symptom or disease. That's why it takes a bit longer time. Uh, it starts with deep investigation of the person's history, their health history, their background, understanding even their trauma. Uh, for me, the first intake is it's an hour and a half uh, to review a few documents that uh, the clients share with me. Understanding even the health of their mother since, the, you know, when they were pregnant, for example, what happened in their childhood, what did they eat at that time, what medications did they take, um, where they live, possible toxin exposure, dental health, and then, for example, having silver fillings, you know, there's always the mercury toxicity involved in there. Um, so very detailed questionnaires and understanding the person in front of us. Uh, and how they are living. And then we dig deep as needed on what may be contributing. So is it possible food sensitivities? Is it possible genetic variants? And when we say genetic, it's not like you have a gene for disease. So you have this gene and this disease is happening. It's not always like that. Most of the time, there would be genetic variants in how your liver is do, doing the detoxification, for example. There would be genetic variants in how you could activate the vitamin D or you know, convert the folate into the active form. So all of these small variants and SNPs, which control many functions and enzyme productions in our body, would accumulate the factors and contribute to diseases. So understanding the genetic makeup Oh, really helps, really, really helps. I've done it for myself. I've done it for family members who were experiencing difficult health conditions. And then I recommend it also for my clients. Does it uh, take a series of tests in order to do that? So there is a genetic test where yeah, you could just, yeah, with a small uh, blood spot um, and then you send it to the lab to do the analysis and you get the report. 
Um, but there are so many other tests also like functional stool tests. This is big. I think it's so important everyone to look at their microbiome. So microbiome is maybe people know as the good bacteria and bad bacteria we have in our gut, in our intestines. And it's not just bacteria. There would be fungal species, there would be other types of parasites and worms. And we need to have our microbiome balanced and healthy with more good bacteria than the bad bacteria. Um, and the regular stool tests you do uh, when you visit a doctor when you have severe acute symptoms is different because they look at specific um, parasites that would cause these strong symptoms. While for chronic conditions, it's a matter of imbalance and we need to understand do you, for example, not have enough of good bacteria? And why is that? Maybe you have overgrowth of a specific type of bad bacteria, and then you need to understand why and what you can do about it. So it gives you complete insights of what's happening in your gut. And most diseases start in the gut. Absolutely. And we're talking about you know, uh, immune system and autoimmune diseases. 70% of your immune system is in the gut. So the health of your microbiome and the health of your intestinal lining plays a big part in how you're triggering your immune system and how it responds with inflammation. So there are other tests for hormones, for example, checking your cortisol level, which is the stress hormone. And people sometimes think, okay, oh, all stress is bad, but no having too little stress or too little cortisol is as bad as having consistently high and chronic uh, elevated cortisol levels because of chronic stress. Um, so there are these tests available, but also knowing the person is the first step. Yeah, so we are discussing now the technique that you go through with your patients when they come to you and when you're trying to understand their history, you do a personalized, um, uh, let's say, questionnaire. Your your clients uh, have to explain their history, their background, their family's background, uh, health-wise. And once you understand that, then you'll be able to know what kind of tests you would recommend for them to take. And then after that, once you receive uh, all this information, then you'll be able to tell them or give them a protocol. So how does the next step go? Is it like a diagnosis of something? Is it just a recap of what you have understood from their history? What's the next step? Okay. So as a coach, I don't diagnose. I don't prescribe. I, I'm not a doctor. So just to be clear, and I don't even give diet plans. <laughs> That's the job of a dietitian. So what I do is empower the client to understand their body. They understand where are areas that we could support and help it, help with more balance. So that is the key because the client needs to be expert on their body. Uh, so understanding what works, what doesn't work, and the why is important. Um, and sometimes, by the way, uh, not everyone will need more tests, some functional tests. We can start with simple tests that they did with their GP, uh, but. In most cases, the GP will just tell them, you're fine. Everything is in the normal range. Again, <laughs> that's an issue because being in the normal range does not mean you are at optimal levels. So if it's vitamin related, then it needs to be high enough to support you. If it's infl inflammation marker, then it really needs to be in the lower side of this, of this normal range. So even explaining these everyday you know, lab tests to the client makes difference to understand where we could boost, where we could support for the functions to work better. And the body has its own ability to heal itself. If you understand what it needs and you give it to it, then the body can heal itself. And that's the power of you know, going deep and understanding what's happening in your body. Then in terms of the protocol, well, the protocol would be highlights of the areas where we will work on, then what are the possible ways of supporting? Again, there is not one way of doing anything and every client is different and their lifestyle is different. So I meet them where they are at and, you know, support them from that point, how we could move forward at the pace that would uh, suit them. 
some clients, they are excited and they want to do, you know, five changes at a time and I will change my food and I will sleep like this and I will exercise and I will, you know, we'll draw to the bio dentist and all of that. Some people are like, no, 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 no. Let me focus on just improving breakfast. And that's fine. And the beauty is that just being consistent, even with small steps, really have positive, big impact on health transformation. And uh, normally your clients would be uh, coming to you how often? And this is just to put perspective on, on your practice and just for people to, to know what to expect. How often do they come to you, let's say once a week? What's the frequency that you would normally um, recommend? Okay, we would meet every two weeks while also being in touch between the sessions. If they have questions, I check in with them, what's happening. So we're always in touch, but meeting uh, would be every two weeks. And the minimum period, the minimum to work together would be three, four months. Uh, anything less, really, you will not see big changes, you know, because it's small steps that accumulate and then you will see the difference. Um, of course, it's not like you will not notice anything different uh, during the earlier stages. No, even with a couple of uh, weeks of implementing a change, you will feel relief. For example, uh, you will see difference in your energy level, in your mood, um, maybe in your uh, skin, um, the bowel movements. Um, so there will be changes you will start noticing, but the big transformation, it takes a few months. And in the case of autoimmune diseases, then it is a longer journey, uh, depending on the person, how severe are the symptoms, uh, when did this start, uh, what they have done so far to support their body or continue doing the opposite. Um, so it will be a longer journey to see a bigger impact. So you mentioned, and I agree with you, everybody goes to through transitions in a different way, depending on how comfortable they feel, depending, it's a personal individual choice at the end of the day, right? And there are different aspects to when, when it comes to lifestyle changes. Uh, you mentioned a few, uh, there's your diet and your food intake, and then there is your sleep, then there's exercise, uh, managing your anxiety and your stress levels. There is so many, right? So if you were to prioritize and say, if somebody is that category of people who just want to start taking it one step at a time, what would you say is the most important one for them to start with? Well, it depends on the person, but there are two top priorities for me, which would be the food and the stress coping. So uh, these two are important. So it depends, again, as I said, on the client, what is important for them at that point. Some uh, people come to me with really high anxiety uh, or they have experienced past trauma, which they never resolved or dealt with. And, you know, I really appreciate their trust of sharing with me everything that they have experienced. And sometimes it's the first time for them to share what happened in their childhood or teenage year. And I've heard so many difficult stories in the, my years of coaching now. Uh, and it is sad, especially for women, the things that they experience. So if they have not worked with a therapist before, the first step I do is refer them to see a therapist. I would not support someone with a strong trauma impact uh, if they are not seeing a therapist at the same time as seeing me. And I have released clients from the contract because they were not ready to see a therapist and deal with that. And I said, I was honest, like it's the stress response has big impact on how you're doing in your physical body and how you everything is functioning. So if you're not ready to tackle that, then it will be difficult to see big transformation. So for those people and, you know, and the good thing is that they take it in uh, positively and they even refer their friends to me, even though we didn't actually work together, but they know that um, integrity is important. I will not just take someone's money if they are not going to see a, a transformation and big impact. Uh, food again, it's a major part uh, of uh, what we work on. And it comes in different ways because some people, for example, 
they don't have sufficient nutrients because of their food choices. So they are eating more quick meals, eating out, uh, you know, more of a junk type of food, sandwiches based. So they are missing a lot of nutrients. Where is the, you know, fibrous vegetables? Where is their quality protein? We need the healthy fats. So this would be an area where we need to focus on. But some people are already eating healthy. Then for those people, okay, so let's see where is the problem. Is it the way they are eating? Is it the digestion and maybe the stomach acid is not strong enough? And maybe they are stressed while eating. So if you are stressed, again, you're not secreting enough digestive enzymes. So you will not digest the food well to absorb the nutrients. Maybe this is all fine, but they are reacting to some foods where, where we call the food sensitivity or food intolerance. So they are eating healthy foods, but their body reacts to that and causes symptoms. So in that case, then, all right, let's figure it out. What is it? And even though there are so many food intolerance tests in the market, honestly, none of them is 100% accurate, okay? Um, and there would be false positives and false negatives. For some people, they like to see a report, you know? So they see the results and they are that would encourage them to take action. But if you're not of that type, we could do elimination diet for three weeks and eliminating the top, uh, for example, foods that most people react to in terms of food sensitivity, not allergy. Allergy is very different. Uh, food sensitivity, it takes you know, 12 to 72 hours to give symptoms. The symptoms could be anything, could be headache, could be brain fog, could be eczema, could be bloating, uh, could be mood issue. So with the elimination, uh, then we do a, re a structured reintroduction, one thing at a time, supervised, monitoring our symptoms, so that you will know, all right, I am reacting to this, but not this one. So you will prefer your safe list or unsafe list. And even then, when you are reacting to foods, many times it's not necessary to eliminate those foods forever. However, it, it's not enough to just cut them out for some time. If you know you react to something, we need to work on the gut health. So again, we go back to the gut health, the intestinal lining. This is very important. And after a few months, you can try again to reintroduce the food. Now, of course, in some cases, yes, it's possible there is one or two food items that you need to give up forever. But it's totally worth it because you will experience really vibrant wellness. So it makes sense to cut it out. And I know people who challenge their body every now and then to see, okay, maybe I'm now better. I can handle this, especially when it comes to gluten or dairy. But again, maybe yes, you're fine now, maybe no. And when you react, it's just a confirmation your body does not like this food. So you can cut it out. And the great thing is that there are many alternatives available. So I'm really simplifying to my clients. If they need to cut out certain foods, then what are healthy options that they could incorporate? So they are not hungry and they are enjoying tasty food. Because food should be, you know, bringing us joy. We need to be enjoying it. Um, so this is, yeah, I help a lot with the practical area of how to shop, how to prepare food everything that the client would need uh, to support the food changes. Yes, I agree with you. And I've seen this personally as well and people who are close to me. When we stop certain foods that are causing reactions, whether it's inflammation, whether it's like you said, fogginess, especially when it comes to sugar, when you stop sugar, you start experience this brain fog in the next few days after you stop it completely. And then you have this clarity. Yes. Withdrawal symptom, symptom, yeah. It's true, it's true. You do experience withdrawal symptoms and then, yeah, you get into a balanced state, yes. Yes, and then, but then for certain foods, what I found is funny is certain foods that I've stopped, my body would reject and I feel disgusted when I see them afterwards. But certain foods, after a while, still, I would, if I were, if I were tempted, I would still reach out 
to get it. Like you said, it's like, oh, either I'm tempted or either I'm, I say, okay, let me try to see how I react to it. Just one spoonful of uh, peanut butter, you know, even though I read a lot about what, you know, the effects of the way that peanuts are stored and, and what happens to the peanuts during that storage period. And then the effects of that um, on your health. And I stopped it and I saw, because I used to eat peanut butter on a daily basis, I love it. It's a high in protein. It's it's healthy and especially the one that comes without any additives. And then when I stopped it, I realized in a few days only, you know, the inflammation just went down massively. And then one spoonful, one spoonful, the next day I would see the inflammation yes. come back. Yes, and and that's the thing. It's okay to experiment for some time, uh, but then yeah cutting it out for longer period would be important. And with peanuts, since you mentioned it, exposure to mold is a problem. So there's always mold overgrowth. And then when they are doing the butter and everything is mashed, like, you know, and the flavors added and the other ingredients, you will not see it, but you are ingesting mold and your body will be re reacting to it. Um, so if you really like the peanuts and it's not specifically the peanut that your body is reacting to, buy it whole and make your own butter at home. And I know people think, oh goodness, that, that's what would be difficult. You know, that will take time. And I know I've been through this, you know, when I, I, I'm gluten-free and uh, milk-free and mostly dairy-free and the changes took some time to be practical, but now I make my own almond milk wow. because Believe it or not, the ones you buy from the store, even if it says organic almond milk, look at the ingredients. How many ingredients are mentioned in there? What is the percentage of the almonds in this whole mix? Why there is preservatives and flavoring and sugar or sweetener and, you know, all of the other ingredients, which will trigger the body. They are not natural food. So it is normal that they will trigger inflammation. And for someone who is experiencing chronic conditions, it makes different. All of these small things make difference. So you need to find your balance, clean your diet of the processed food as much as possible. And again, I'm not saying 100% super clean, everything homemade, you know, that is not practical. Uh, I like to use the rule of 80-20. So if 80% of what you're eating is healthy and super nutritious and supportive of your body, then you can handle the 20% of indulgence. That's fine. Unless you are, you know, reacting, you have intolerance to certain foods, then yeah, these would be no. Uh, find the pleasure and indulgence with alternative options. I agree with you. And the body is powerful. Like you mentioned before, it's capable of still dealing with the toxins and dealing with all these, like the junk that we, that 20% junk, you know, the body would be strong enough to be able to handle them. Unless like you said, there's some kind of a, of a reaction. Um, can you tell us apart from your personal journey yourself and your daughters uh, share with us a success story of one of your clients that, um, that you, uh, that you came across? Yeah. Well, I have, I have a few clients, um, since I started focusing on autoimmune conditions, I, I, I was getting more clients with complex conditions, whether it's psoriasis or uh, Hashimoto's or the Crohn's. Um, and it's something I want to clarify. When someone has autoimmunity, uh, it's your body, of course, reacting to certain tissues. So in psoriasis, your body is reacting to in, in the tissues in your skin. For Hashimoto's, you're reacting to the thyroid and so on. But the root of all of this is immune system dysregulation. So instead of your immune system tolerating your own tissues, it is reacting. And we need to understand why it is happening so that we can deal with it. So sometimes uh, when it comes to uh, thyroid, for example, Hashimoto's, gluten, the protein in wheat, molecularly looks very similar to the thyroid tissues. So if you have a reaction to gluten, for example, and your immune system is, you know, surveilling and checking your body all the time, and it's hyper, you know, it is in a hyper state, and it sees your thyroid tissues, it would flag it as, oh, 
it's like the gluten I'm reacting to. So it would attack the thyroid tissues, for example. Um, or sometimes it's possible that inside the thyroid tissue, there is a pathogen, there is a bacteria or a virus, and your body's trying to kill that pathogen, but then of course there is collateral damage of the tissues. So understanding why it's happening and understanding the root cause is the same. It's immune system dysregulation, and there are many reasons for that. So this is important because if you have one autoimmune condition and you don't deal with the root cause, then your body will also react to another organ, another tissue type. That's why if someone is diagnosed with autoimmune disease, there is a higher chance of getting a second and third autoimmune diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And this is a message I want everyone to be aware of. It's not like you have this one autoimmune condition and maybe you're taking medication to suppress the immune system and help with the symptom relief. If you don't change your lifestyle and you don't dig deep into why this happened, then it will progress into different types of autoimmune diseases. Um, so with the Hashimoto's, for example, you know, my, uh, one of my clients experience of fatigue was so strong and um, the brain fog. Um, and, you know, for someone who is ambitious and you know at a senior level and they want to excel in their job and they have they want to get promoted and they want that drive having autoimmune condition can be debilitating and unfortunately many workplaces will not understand and give you a slack if you have an autoimmune condition uh, and in many cases people don't share you know because who would understand that i'm feeling this weak sometimes and are experiencing pain because of my condition so for her, she was the type that I'm ready to take many actions. Yes, you want me to do yoga? I will do yoga. Yes, you want me to cut this? Yes, I will do that. Uh, you want me to do this test? Yes, I am ready to do it. So <laughs> that was great. And her experience of energy, because that was the main complaint for her, was very transformative because it's not just she started to do well and she got the promotion she was eyeing, she started to spend more time with her sons, two children she had, doing outdoor and adventures with them over the weekend, where before that was a normal, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to catch up with sleep because my body feels tired all the time. And there is nothing called catching up with sleep, you know, <laughs> that's another thing. If you're not getting your rest every day at night, sleeping seven to nine hours, as much as your body needs, then there is nothing called catching up and trying to restore. No, if you're feeling tired all the time, please dig deep to understand why. And for her case, when she came to me, she, I was like, okay, first of all, you need to see a doctor, check these markers. And she was shocked to find the autoimmune activity. So it wasn't just a hypothyroid. It was Hashimoto's hypothyroid. And it makes difference on how you will address. So you, Changing your food, adding nutritious foods is very important. Understanding what your thyroid needs to produce the hormones and, you know, convert them to the active forms. So focusing on food sources of selenium and uh, the zinc and the iron. And, you know, I, I start with food. I try to focus more on food as much as possible. And the supplement, it, the name suggests it's a supplement. It's complementing the food as needed. And could be you know, needed for a certain type uh, amount of time unless you did your genetic testing and you know you cannot you know, use certain nutrients actively. And in that case, you know, okay, maybe I need vitamin D regularly. Maybe I need folate regularly. Um, so, so again, depending on the person, what they need. So this is one example, but th there's another client with psoriasis. And even though... Again, another point to, to clarify, with autoimmune diseases, we cannot say you are completely healed, you, you know, and you no longer have auto, this autoimmune disease. What happens is that you put it in remission. So you're not experiencing the symptoms, you're not getting the flares, or at least you're not getting the flares as frequent as you used to. And if you get a flare, you know what to do and you're, how to support your body to get over it 
as quickly as possible. So that is the difference when you empower yourself with the knowledge and the tools and the food and you know lifestyle changes that works for your body. Even if a flare happens, because stress is a trigger, for example, if you experience really a difficult situation, people notice their autoimmune symptoms flare. In that case, through our work together, you will have some tools and you know we would practice certain ways of mindfulness, of uh, supporting the body, of even breathing, uh, so to get over that period. Sometimes it's a food that they took by mistake. They were not aware and their body reacted to it and it spiraled. And again, usually there's multi-factor happening at the same time. So you know what to do to support your body. So in case of psoriasis, it's not like she got them all healed, but there was only one spot left and she knew it was triggered whenever she gets stressed. But, you know, it is a big change. And on, on the last day we had our session, uh, I asked her to write everything she experienced, all the changes she has experienced, to write them in her notebook. So since the time we started working together, and she kept writing and writing and writing. And so she filled in three pages of how different she feels now compared to before. The mood, the relationships, the exercise, socializing, no more, you know, uh, bleeding drums, uh, the hair loss, you know, so many things, you cannot even put them in a list and each person experienced them differently. So that's the beauty of personalized support. <laughs> I agree with you. I That was going to be my next question is, can people actually get cures from these conditions? You already answered it. And um, again, from personal experience, and I know maybe some people who are going through a condition and they are affected emotionally through this, uh, you know, I hope that this might not be, will not be taken in the wrong way. But sometimes we get these conditions as an alert for us to take care of these other thing parts of our uh, uh, our lives, right? It could be physical, it could be mental, it could be emotional. And like you said, with your client who had Hashimoto's, is once you start taking care of your health and then treating not tre treating the, the 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 variables that will help you keep those symptoms and regulating and maintaining the disease, you know, under control, the condition under control, so you don't get those symptoms flaring up. Once you once she took care of all those things, other things in her life started also falling into place and becoming even better. So I always say, and again, this is not like to undermine what anybody is going through with any condition, but if we look at it from a different perspective, because one thing can be, you can sit there and look at it from this perspective of, you know, I'm a victim, I'm in pain, I'm in this, or just um, if you get the support that you need, sometimes it comes from within and most of the time you need to ask for help. Get the support that you need, loved ones and experts like you that are there to just take the person's hand and be there with, with them in their journey. Get the support that you need and then let's change that perspective. Let's start looking at things from a different perspective and listening to other people's stories also helps. And let's try to turn this around to be something beneficial for us. And, you know, like what you believe you attract, this whole way of thinking. Again, if I believe that this is there as a reminder for me to start attracting other things better things into my life then I will use it as a catalyst to drive me into doing these other things and I believe it's that it's like that for everyone no one is exempt from this rule I think if we start thinking about these things differently we can each of us turn our lives around I totally agree with everything you said so it requires mindset change so you need to be, first of all, open-minded and also change the perspective, how you're thinking of the circumstances you're going through. Just like you said, if you look at it as opportunity now to reflect and steer away from what's not serving me, what's not supporting my body, what's not supporting my emotional health and do something different that will slowly also bring more positive changes into my life, then you will see, you will experience this. Um, I see it all the time. And as a coach, you know, I look at the person holistically. We do an exercise called the circle of life, for example. So we assess um, the home environment, the relationships, the 
finance, financial side, uh, your career satisfaction, uh, of course, your exercise, your food, your um, mental health, even spirituality. You know? So we need to discuss all of these and see where you feel, oh, no, I'm not happy in this area. I'm not satisfied. And once you start questioning, that's when you start finding solutions. So I totally agree and encourage everyone to ha have that time to reflect on their life in all aspects and see what directions they want to take. That is beautiful. Um, Karine, I have one last question for you because I want to honor your time and this conversation can go on for so long. Um, just one last question that I like to ask my guests is if you have one practical tool or key health advice that you would give to anyone watching or listening, um, what would it be? And let's say focusing on people, obviously, because of our topic who have, uh, who are going through uh, an autoimmune uh, disease or condition. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to share two things. Uh, one is take small steps, but consistent steps. So it doesn't need to be complete change of everything and turning everything upside down in your life and you know because that overwhelm will cause more of the symptoms and flares so just take it easy if you are from listening to this episode uh assess your life you can start by doing it by yourself so do i need to focus on food maybe improve the quality of what i'm eating choosing more nourishes food no more nutritious food is it maybe the sleep? I need to prioritize it and do more. Is it maybe the stress? You know, am I experiencing too much stress and I don't know what to do about it? So start with the reflection, choose something and choose a small step. And when it comes to stress, because it has big impact on the autoimmune conditions, I'd like to share a simple tool also here for diaphragmatic breathing. The idea is that when you are stressed, you are in fight or flight mode. So your body is getting ready either to you know, fight the bear or the lion in front of you or run away and, and you know, hide in the cave. Um, but if you're experiencing stress in everyday life, so you, you know, you're not actually fighting the bear or running away, you're there in the circumstances, you need to find a way to support your stress response. And one of the easiest, quickest thing is this type of breathing where when you inhale from the nose, your belly will come out. So you are inflating it like a balloon. And when you exhale, you exhale slowly from the mouth and your belly goes in. This type of breathing, you can combine it with counting if you want. So you count till four for inhale, hold uh, for four seconds again for uh, that time, and then exhale again for the count of four. Um, and or you could do the six, seven, eight. Again, you can combine it with counting. But the whole idea is that you're inhaling and your belly comes out. You're exhaling, your belly goes in. This is very soothing for the vagus nerve, which is the biggest nerve that connects our gut with our brain. And it's a soothing effect and it's calming. So we immediately shut off the stress response if you do this breathing for a minute or two. I advise my uh, clients to take this as a prescription and practice breathing three times a day. And then whenever they are experiencing the stress, yeah, they are used to this breathing and they will do it immediately. So um, there are so many different other tools in terms of mindfulness and meditation, uh, grounding outside and walking in nature and all of that. But sometimes you're stuck somewhere and this is a very quick way to calm your nervous system. And I would say, add to that is I would like people to, like you said, and I, I think that to me was a very nice way of putting it, is you write it down as a prescription. So anybody who we've all been conditioned that, you know, the doctor gave me that medicine, I'm going to get better now. And once I start popping the pills, then my life is going to be excellent and I'm going to take care of all my ailments and all my symptoms. Let's start treating these tools. They are gems. Let's start treating these tools as, as a pill, right? Like, yes, take it seriously, do it. Just because it's not as quick as taking something, popping it in your mouth and taking it with water. And they are still quite short. They are still 
quick. They are still easy to do. You can do them anywhere. This breathing technique, I've tried it many times. You don't need to be sitting in a quiet room with your eyes closed, just <laughs> even sitting in your desk or in your cubicle, close your eyes. Even if you don't want to close your eyes and don't want to like, like you're worried that people would be looking at you, even with your eyes closed, just setting, putting your attention on that breath, on your stomach and disconnecting from your surroundings, that for just one minute, like you said, is more than enough. And it's more powerful than any pill you could take. So I would really, really, really say, let's take these tools as gems and let's treat them as that. They are more important and more powerful and more impactful to our health than any pill we can take. And there's, there are no side effects to breathing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's that should that's the most important one there are no side effects yes yes thank you so much Garine I mean I I had so much fun during this conversation I learned a lot of things from you I'm very grateful for that and I'm very sure that anybody listening will learn at least at least they will take one thing into consideration for their life even if they're not going through um uh, an autoimmune condition in their lives i mean what you shared with us today was just beautiful a lot of gems to take away so thank you so much thank you for having me rasha thank you for tuning in to this episode we hope you found it insightful and you enjoyed it as much as we did creating it don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this let's continue creating this amazing community of holistic wellness seekers and practitioners together see you in the next one